you see um, France um, painting starts at the beginning of the last turn of the last century. Because between the Renaissance and about 1800, it was the great patrons dictated the terms of art, the classicism, uh, religious themes and that sort of thing. But when you got to the fantasy stuff, then the painters had their own responsibility. So it's, for me, France is where it starts. So your perspective really is historical. You're, you're looking into a position well, in time and you're yes, influenced by that. In a, in a way, yes. But the thing is, from our perspective, we have a chance to... Uh, assess uh, from this distance what they did. Yeah. To to have been a part of it, it was one thing, but we've now got a hundred years later to to reassess. And, and our, ours is a better better time to be. Being people like Charles Baudelaire and all those writers, they really lived the part of, of that of that terri ter terrible hysterical oppression, mm. uh, which was what gave rise to a lot of the sort of angst that is is in their paintings with the works of people like Van Gogh and uh, you know, the, sort of the frustrations of people like Gauguin. You know. But from this perspective, we can see now more the art and mm -hmm. enjoy, enjoy the, the history of their lives. Yeah. You know. So, tell us about the actress. Well, you see, it's the simplicity of it, this, this lovely blue texture. The thing I like in, in art at all is chalk work. Degas or... or any of those others, they knew how to handle chalk. Yeah. Now, but, but chalk can be fugitive. So I try to get the same effect in oil. So the, the, the rough texture and the, and, the, and the things coming through and all these changes in colour, it's an attempt to reproduce that unsullied application Precious. of chalk. Yeah. With this stuff, obviously you've done quite a few of these inspired pieces by this period in, in sort of history and very French, and you're moving on perhaps to something Spanish. Have you started? Have you, you know, embarked yes, on I've done. Yes, I've done several of, of Goya and the royal family, some of them yeah. quite huge, and they, they, was, they sold and went out to Spain. Yes. Um, but I now want to treat of the, going back a bit earlier, to Velasquez. Yeah. Uh, and those lovely ones of, those, of the, the Infantas. It would be politically incorrect these days to, to paint a dwarf, but one should be, a, one should be able to, yeah. really, you see, without offending anybody. Yeah. Because these, these, they were all part of the genuine entertainment of uh, the way they... You know, yeah. Uh, um, part of the... The lifestyle at the time. Yeah. You know? When you look at some of those grotesques in the, in the drawings of Goya, yeah. uh, they weren't exaggerated. There were, there were things that he saw every, yeah. every day, just like the bullfights and, yeah. and, and the atrocities. Uh, the massacres and the, and the blood, the bloodthirsty race all together. Mm. You know? uh, but that's that is the sort of the verity of it all, the truth. Yes. You know, um, it's getting and, an essence of it, mm, isn't it? And, mm. um, well, uh, and it isn't. It, and it isn't in evidence in Italian art at all, or even or even in French art. You know, there there is a sort of uh, uh, an anger almost in Spanish art that is, seems to be quite unique. And you you were mentioning about. Um, the Eastern, uh, before when we were talking, uh, an Eastern sort of adventure going perhaps to China or um, places like this. Are you planning to do that? Yes, I'm going, I'm going to Dubai in, in July for a week and then I'm going on to China for another seven weeks. So. You know, we wish you all the best with those travels and we wait with bated breath for the next collection of paintings. Thank you. And I think people in Whitstable should be very pleased and honoured that they've got something like this <laughs> going on in the high street. Wonderful, yes, yeah, thank you. And lovely to meet you, thanks very much.